Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today I'm going to be reacting to Ami Didat or Quran a Miracle or Miracles. It's a 1 hour 33 minutes video. I don't think I'll do everything because it's too long. I'm not sure. I'm yet to decide. So I'll do this in segments. Hope you guys enjoy. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. If you want to reach us, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. And feel free to interact with us. If you want to suggest something drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to it so without wasting time let's get into the video hello what are you reading hi it's the holy quran but isn't the quran only for muslims not at all its teachings are addressed to all humanity from heads of state to everyday people like us what does it teach us? It's a book of life for life. No thinking person should pass through life without it. Where can I get a copy? From the IPCI, 124 Queen Street, Durban. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الآن أيها الإخوة والأخوات نحيي ضيفنا الكبير الشيخ أحمد ديدات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا لولا أنزل عليه آيات من ربه قل إنما الآيات عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين أولم يكفهم أن أنزلنا عليك الكتاب يطلع عليهم إن في ذلك لرحمة وذكرة لقوم يؤمنون صدق الله صدق الله المرزيم Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters, the subject is Al-Quran, a miracle of miracles. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. As we proceed, I will explain the verse and what Allah Baridala says about this subject of miracles. But let me explain to you what a miracle is. What is a miracle? A mojiza. A miracle is an impossibility. Something beyond human endeavor, human effort. For example, one of us, while this meeting is carrying on, he falls unconscious and he expires. A doctor is called up and the doctor certifies that the person is dead. Another doctor is brought forward to give his opinion and he also certifies that the man is dead. Take the body away, prepare for burial. But there comes along a man of God, sees this dead person, dead body, and he says, he commands, Kum bi iznillah. 
wake up get up in the name of allah and the person gets up alive and well we say it's a miracle because it was an impossibility certified by two doctors and yet the person has come back to life miracle but suppose the man was dead for three days put in a mortuary in a morgue and after three days somebody comes along the man is gone as hard as rock and he shouts at the cops kum biiznillah arise in the name of allah and the man comes back from the dead from the mortuary from the morgue we say that is a greater miracle because it's a greater impossibility but after the person is dead and buried his bones have rotted in the grave and somebody cries kum biiznillah and the person gets out of the grave alive breathing well we say that is still a greater miracle so greater the impossibility the greater the miracle i hope this definition you know is simple enough for everybody to grasp now in that sense the quran is a miracle of eloquence in the first instance you see nations before islam were sent prophets and mankind had a tendency to demand proof by some supernatural acts hazrat musa alaihi salam the holy prophet moses he was given a type of miracle which was akin to magic he was among the magicians in, in egypt so he had to contend with these magicians and allah gave him a miracle to confound these magicians Firaun thinking that Musa alayhi salam was another magician he brought forth his own magicians to play the part and the magicians the egyptian magicians they had little little magic sticks of magic wands and they threw them on the ground and all these little sticks became little little snakes serpents allah bari taala had already given hazrat musa alayhi salam an experience with his rod on the mount now he knew what he was to do so he threw his rod and the rod turned into a serpent and this serpent swallowed up all the little snakes of the egyptians and hazrat musa alayhi salam picked up the serpent and it turned back once more into a rod and the egyptian magicians they realized that this is no magic this is not hypnotism this is not mesmerism because to hypnotize a person you cast a spell you make the person to see what is really not there it's an illusion is created the sticks you can make it appear like snakes by casting a spell but here all the little sticks had vanished to demesmerize it would have been to make the snakes to appear as sticks no 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 but these sticks had vanished into the serpent and the serpent was a rod and the rod was no thicker than what it was before a great miracle and the egyptian magicians they confessed that this is no magic this is something beyond it was a miracle a real miracle not magic so allah gives miracles according to the mentality the needs of the people people with magical minds they were confounded with magic superior magic real magic hazrat isa alaihi salam jesus christ when he appears on the scene he comes among a people who were steeped in greek medicine they were performing wonders with with medicine so allah gives him healing powers healing those born blind a person who goes blind by shock or by some damage infection is quite a different thing from one who is born blind and allah bari taala gave him those powers of healing those who were born blind and the lepers and he gave life back to the dead revive the dead biiznillah type of miracle to convince the people our nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam he comes among a people who were boasting about their language the language was the boast their eloquence their poetry they said we are an eloquent people we are the arabs and the rest of the world is ajam dumb compared to us they boasted they would ask this is you 
in your language, you Ajami, how many words have you got for a horse in your language? Synonyms for a horse. Oh man, so maybe half a dozen. He said, you see, we can give you a hundred in our language. He says, how many words, synonyms you have for a sword? Oh, anybody would say half a dozen. He said, you see, in my language, I can give you a hundred. So you see, we are the eloquent people and you people are all dumb, ajam. So among such a people, when he comes along, the greatest miracle that he gave was the Qur'an. That the language of the Qur'an in the first instance was beating the people. And they realized, people with sense, that this is not poetry, this is not uh, prose, this is something beyond our understanding, and people accepted the faith. But let me tell you what a non-Muslim, non-Muslims, they have to say about the Quran and its eloquence. A. J. Arbery, an Englishman who translated the Holy Quran into English, in his preface he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, is a foreigner. He had just learned Arabic. Arabic is not his mother tongue. And he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, meaning beautifully recited, it is as though I'm listening to music. Underneath the flowing melody, there is sounding all the time the insistent beat of a drum. It is like the beating of my heart. You can't help vibrating on the wavelength of the Quran. Then Reverend Bosworth Smith, a Christian missionary, he wrote a book on Muhammad and Muhammadanism. In this book, he says, about our Nabi Karim sallam, and the Holy Quran, he says, illiterate himself, an ummi, scarcely able to read or write, he was yet the author of a book, which we do not agree, that Muhammad sallam, was not the author of the book. He says, according to his belief, understanding that Muhammad sallam, is the author of this book, so he is yet the author of a book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one. And is reverenced to this day by a sixth of the whole human race as a miracle. As a miracle of purity, of style, of wisdom, and of truth. It is the one miracle claimed by Muhammad. His standing miracle, he called it. And a miracle indeed it is. Without doubt, it is a mochiza. An enemy testifies that this is a miracle indeed. And Allah draws our attention to this. In the verse I read to you from the Holy Quran, from Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29. I'm coming to it. Allah says, Waqalu, and they say, who are the Muslims? They say, Lawla unzila alayhi ayatum mir rabbi. So why is not a sign, a miracle, a mujiza given to him by his Lord. This is a demand. They had heard about the miracles of Moses. They had heard about the miracles of Jesus. Now they want some similar performance from the Prophet of Islam. Like, for example, they were asking, he says, look, O Muhammad, they were trying to humor him. They were trying to make a mockery of him. So he said, look, O Muhammad, you say you are a Prophet of God. Why don't you perform some miracles? Like the prophets of old. Like this Ohad, Mount Ohad, outside Makkah. Why don't you turn it into gold? Then we will know that you are a true man of God. Or put up a ladder up into heaven. Go up that ladder and bring a book down. Then we will believe that you are a true messenger of God. Or make rivers to gush out in the desert then we will know that you are somebody that we can hearken to. Waqalu, and they say, Lawla unzil alayhi ayatum rabbi. In answer to that, Allah makes him to say, Qul, tell them, innama la ayatu in the Allah, so most certainly signs, miracles are in the hands of my Lord, in the hands of Allah. Innama I am only a warner, clear cut, straightforward, plain, simple, warner. Awalam yakfihim. 
Is this not enough for you? Awalam yakfihim. Anna anzalna alayk al kitaba. Yutla alayhim. Say, is this not enough for them? That you rehearse to them, that you read to them a book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. This book we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. Is that not enough for them? To you, an ummi, a person who doesn't know how to read or write. You are rehearsing this book to them. Is that not enough in itself that it should be a miracle? You know this human child, this little child, Muhammad. He grew, grew up in front of your eyes. And up to the age of 40, he was like your own child. You know every move he made, every things that he did. You know everything about him. And this man who had had no schooling, now he's coming along and rehearsing the book to Many books have been written by man, but many times we find ourselves listening to, uh, to say this message is from God, or God is on that wrote this book from time to time. I'm sure those we've come across people that would say such things. I'm curious as to know who wrote the Quran. Did it just come into existence? Was man behind the written text found in the Quran, what exactly? And I'm not saying this to um, dismiss anything. I would just love for someone to just educate me. Otherwise, I love the way I mean that has so far described what a miracle is, something that beyond um, the doings of mankind, which is very, very um, agreeable, I should say. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think and feel free to answer the questions that i've asked in the comment section below if you want me to react to the entire thing let me know down below if you want me to react to something else drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to react to this like i said i'm going to do this in segments so i'm going to get started with the second one and we'll see how many we're going to do at the end of the day